Okay. Um, today, well, let's discuss Bitcoin's price volatility, and let's answer the question of why Bitcoin's price is so volatile. We're going to also discuss best practices and strategies to buy, selling, and trading Bitcoin. In February of this year, Bitcoin fell to its lowest point since 2017's high of $20,000. In February of this year, it fell to about $3,200. But since that lowest point reached in February, Bitcoin has been rising and has more than quadrupled its total price. Today, its price is about $11,800. Although it actually reached close to 14,000 about 30 days ago. And after hearing scary news about governments cracking down on Bitcoin owners, the price dropped nearly to 9,500 about two weeks ago. So, why all the stark price spikes and price drops? Many Bitcoin buyers seem to think it's pretty smart to treat Bitcoin like a stock or commodity, something to be traded day to day and looking to make a few dollars per trade. But in the eyes of a stockbroker, this makes plenty of sense because he or she is able to take advantage of large price movements on a day-to-day -day basis. And when you have millions of buyers and sellers doing this on a day-to-day -day basis, then yes, you'll see sharp swings in Bitcoin's price every day, every week, month, and year. These people are called speculators, and they try to predict price movements so that they can make a few dollars on a trade. Okay. And that's fine, except for the fact that Bitcoin is not a stock, nor is it a commodity, and it has its own rate of creation, and no one controls the circulating supply, which is designed by, which is designed to be scarce. Bitcoin is more like a collectible that is highly divisible. Think of a limited supply of Michael Jordan rookie cards. Think of a limited supply of the very first Superman comic book or the limited supply of the very first Rolls-Royce luxury vehicle. All of these things are scarcely limited in supply, and there is no way to add new ones to the available supply. But what this call is from a federal prison. But what is more obvious about all of these things is that we all know they are very valuable objects, and they will only increase in value as time passes. And, unlike a stock, collectibles aren't daily traded in a highly speculative manner. As a matter of fact, if a person highly prizes a collectible, he holds it and attempts to collect more of the same thing or, the, or other items that are related to this collectible. Thereby, he creates a collection. And as time passes, his collection becomes more and more valuable until one day his value reaches an unbelievable, staggering amount. Bitcoin has many of the same properties and characteristics of a collectible, which means you should get it while you can and hold it and collect as much as possible. Bitcoin actually has nothing in common with a stock or with a commodity. Nope, not even with gold. I say this because there is plenty of gold in circulation, and there is plenty of gold being found and mined all the time, and no one knows how much gold will ever exist. But just like a collectible, we all know or can find out exactly how many Bitcoins are in circulation, and we know how many will be created in the future, and precisely when new Bitcoins will get created. And most importantly, we know exactly how many Bitcoins can ever exist. You can't do this with a stock can't do this with a commodity. We can even use a block explorer to see each and every coin when it last moved and how long it's been sitting idle. Again, you can't see these things in a transparent manner with stocks and commodities or even with currencies. Satoshi Nakamoto, the writer of the Bitcoin white paper, wrote that Bitcoin was meant to be a purely peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system that would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without the need for financial institutions to be involved in your transactions. So Bitcoin was created to give us electronic cash that could be used anywhere at any time by anyone in the world with an internet connection. Oh, 
and it also eliminated the need for banks and government control over our everyday commercial transactions and activities. So as we can see, Bitcoin means quite a few different things to different people. And depending on how one sees Bitcoin, it will have a different value. And they will treat it accordingly. For example, if you see Bitcoin as a collectible, then you will buy and hold. We have an acronym for this type of behavior in Bitcoin. It's called HODL, H-O-D-L, which stands for hold on for dear life. And the people who do this, we call them hodlers. Arguably, it is, it is hodlers that have the largest gains in return on investment, especially if they buy Bitcoin near its lowest points in a cycle and then sell it at its highest point in that same cycle or a later cycle. Remember that Bitcoin cycles last about four years. And within that four years, Bitcoin has proven that it will find a new all-time high that's exponentially higher than its last cycle's all-time high, than its last cycle's all-time high. And during this down season of each cycle, it has proven to reach a new bottom that is always exponentially higher than its last cycle's bottom. <coughs> Excuse me, bottom price. Therefore, it is Bitcoin's seasonal, cyclic movements which ultimately decides if Bitcoin is going to run with the bulls or whether Bitcoin is going to hibernate with the bears. Today, we are within the 12-month range of Bitcoin's next halving event in which the price will normally rise steadily up to the halving date. And then after the halving date occurs, Bitcoin not only continues to rise steadily, but it will actually skyrocket for at least 13 to 16 months after the halving event date. This is what has done the last two halving events, and there is no reason why Bitcoin won't repeat this outrageous behavior this time around. At the end of the previous price spikes, Bitcoin gained between 3,000 and 9,000 percent in its value. So if it does anything near these percentages, it won't really matter if you buy Bitcoin today at $3,000 or $10,000 or even $20,000 because this new all-time high price may just as well reach $400,000 or more per coin by the end of the year 2021. That's only if we can trust Bitcoin's history as a real guide. And there is one other layer to this issue I'd like to address, and that's the stability of the U.S. dollar. Because of inflation, the U.S. dollar is terrible to use as a store of value. But inflation also endangers the U.S. dollar's existence because the dollar is constantly losing its value to inflation. The price of goods and services in U.S. dollars is always rising. But on the other hand, because the vehicle of Bitcoin is constantly rising, then prices for goods and services in Bitcoin is constantly going down. So it only makes sense to store your dollars in Bitcoin. To go a step further, I would say it only makes sense to roll over your 401k and your IRA into Bitcoin. It's just a better store of value in the long term. Bitcoin by far has outperformed Amazon stocks, Apple stocks, the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the New York Stock Exchange all put together. There is nothing that comes even close as a long-term or short-term short -term investment or as a store of value, something such as Bitcoin. So Bitcoin only makes sense. Thanks for listening, and as always, I encourage you to cross-check anything I say in my audios and do your own research, meaning do your due diligence. Until next time. And Julie. Yeah, I'm here. Do you have any questions? I didn't get a chance to send you any questions. I got kind of caught up last night. So this college from a federal prison. Did you I, listen to? Um, did you did you catch everything?